Boy, it's super hot today, at least for southern Ontario. It's 30 degrees and we're still in May. I can't believe it. It's too hot to work in the garden, so I decided to put a little video together. In the background here is my new stumpery. If you're interested in building one of those, I have a separate video on how to do that. It's coming along really nice. I added some plants and it's starting to look a little more like a garden. It's going to take a couple years to really look mature. Anyways, today's video is all about peony rings. How do you keep those peonies standing upright? I'm going to go through a number of different rings and support systems for peonies. And then I'll take you out into the garden and show you some actual peonies and show you the rings and show you how to use them. And I think you'll get a good idea of what the pros and cons of all of these are. At the end of the video, I'll even show you some of my peonies that have started to flower. So we'll start with this one right here. This is what a lot of people recommend. It's a tomato cage and it works pretty good. It's got three legs here that you push into the ground. So once it's in the ground, it gives you a height of about this. And that's pretty good for peonies, about two feet. You want the height of your rings to be about a foot and a half to two feet. These are pretty inexpensive. The problem with them is they're too small. Now, if you've just gone out and bought your peony and you're looking for a ring, you look at this and say, hey, this is perfect. My peony has no problem fitting in there. But within a couple of years, your peony clump's going to be too big to fit in here. So I kind of see these as kind of like a trainer ring for very small plants. But once you have a decent clump, they're, they're kind of useless. You can get tomato cages that are larger, and I certainly would recommend those if you're going this route. Here's a really old peony ring. It's a ring of wire with three legs, and the legs move around so you can position them where you want. That's really handy if you have soil that's rocky. Rings that have fixed wires are, have a problem in rocky soil because you push them down. And if you hit a rock, you have to pull it all the way out again and turn it a bit and try again. The nice thing about this one is because this is movable, I can try to push it in the ground. If I hit a rock, I just move the one leg. I don't have to pull everything out again. It's also pretty big. You can see the diameter here. That's a good size for a peony. The problem with this ring is that the wire's kind of flimsy. It's really too thin. A step up from that is this. Same sort of design. It's a round wire, same size, movable legs. It has thicker wire, which holds the peony so much better. This is another peony ring I have, and it's even better because the wire is heavier. When you go out to buy one of these, make sure you buy a good one. You want this wire as thick as you can get it. It just holds everything up so much nicer. It's also easier to push the legs into the soil. They don't bend on you. So this is a pretty good ring. But in fact, this isn't a peony ring, not a real peony ring. If you want a ring for peonies, you really want something like this. You'll notice that this has cross pieces. And so you have these little holes and what happens is the peony grows up here and one stem will go through the hole and now it's held really well. If you don't have this, then all the stems are around the outside falling away from the center. And this holds them up in the center. So this is a really good ring. And these legs are designed to come off and you can join them in wherever you want. The problem with this is that it's good for a few years but once your peony's in the ground for eight to 10 years, this ring is too small. Now at that point, you can decide to divide your peony and make it smaller. But if you like a big, impressive peony, this ring's too small. I'll show you another option to that in the garden. Now let's go have a look at some of these rings in action. This is one of my old fashioned peonies. I think it's a double white and makes really big heads. The bigger the head and the more petals you have in it, the more it needs support because those heads are just too heavy. So when do you put the ring on? Well, this peony's got buds on it. You might be able to see the buds on each one. The ring has to go on before this. I could still put a ring onto this one, but you're probably going to do some damage. You really want to put the peony rings on when they're about a foot tall, long before they make buds. Then it's really easy to put the ring above it. You can see where the plant is and let the peony grow into the ring. So you want the ring placed before the peony is tall enough to need it. Now let's have a look at this peony. Now it's been in my garden for quite a few years. 
and you might be able to see a ring down here, but the peony is grown way outside the ring. So only the center part of the peony is going to be held by this ring. This part will just flop once the flowers are up. And this is a problem with these peony rings. They're all a certain size and once your peony gets bigger, you either have to divide your peony or go to a different system. And in a few minutes, I'm gonna show you a different system that gets around this problem. So what do you do now? The ring's too small. Part of my peony's over here. It's almost ready to flower. It's too late to get a new ring here. Let me show you a little trick. What I use in the garden for tying things up is jute. I always have a roll of this handy. You just cut yourself off a piece. Now come down here where the ring is. Tie the string on. Then wrap the string around the extra branches. Find the ring again, tie it on. So this is now supported a little bit. But you might notice that the pin is this high and the ring is down here. This ring is actually too low for this peony. And when these things flower, they're still going to tend to flop a little bit. And this is another problem with many of these peony rings. By the time you push them in the ground, they're only about a foot, 14 inches tall, and that's too short for peonies. Now what I could do is put another string all the way around up here, and that will kind of hold them in place. And I'll probably do that later but well, you don't need to watch me to do that. Let's go have a look at another peony. Here's another herbaceous peony. The ring's down here, the flowers are up here. Again, it's a little short, but this peony makes single flowers, so they're not as heavy. And they'll be fine like this. The stem is strong enough to hold these up, so this works out quite well. I don't actually put these rings in in the spring. They stay in all year long. It's a whole lot less work that way. I don't know the proper name for this peony, but the common name is Mother's Day peony. It flowers really early and is one of the first peonies that will open in the garden. The nice thing about this peony is that flower heads are fairly small and it doesn't need a ring at all. It just stands up all on its own. This is actually my favorite peony. I've had it a long time. I have no idea what the name is, so if you do recognize it, put the name in the comments for me. What I like about this peony is that the flowers aren't too heavy. And in fact, you can see this is quite a good sized clump. It's got a hundred buds coming here and it's gonna be fabulous in a couple weeks. You wanna see the peony ring this uses? Nothing. If you buy the right kind of peony, it has strong stems, probably smaller flowers, and usually single, not these really heavy double ones. But the bonus is that you don't need a ring. This never gets supported. It never droops. So when you're out buying your next peony, do a little research online and find ones that don't need to be supported. In the last couple years, I've tried a new system, which I think is better than peony rings. So here's a peony, one of these large, big, floppy ones. Been in the family for 30 years. It's a great peony. The flowers are so big and heavy, it needs support. The problem is it grows, and those rings are just too dinky. So I come up with this system here. I put in four stakes around the outside of the plant, and then just use some string. Tie it onto one of the stakes, go to the second one, make a loop there. Don't tie it, just go around it a couple times. Go to the next one and the next one, come back here and tie it. What you have here is a ring that adjusts itself. Every year, you just make it a little bigger. If the peony starts growing in this direction, you put the posts out there. If it grows this direction, you put them over here. Doesn't matter how big this peony gets, this ring will never be too small because I can always move those posts farther and farther out. I've been using this for a couple years and I really like this system. I think that once my peony rings start dying and my plants get too big, I'm gonna switch over to this on all my plants. Peony rings are not just for peonies. Here I have one of the peony rings holding up a monk's hood. This is a summer flowering monk's hood that has a very gray color to it. 
and you can see that the plant is starting to grow through the ring and that supports it quite well. Unfortunately this clump is getting a little too big for this ring and you can see that this is exactly the problem with rings. That's why I think I'm moving away from them and using this string and post system instead. Here's another example of using these rings for other types of plants. This is a bush clematis and it doesn't cling to things. In nature it will just flop and grow along the ground. But that doesn't look so nice in my garden. I want a nice tall clump. So here I've used a tomato cage and this clematis will bloom at about three feet high. And then it will kind of droop down over the cage and the drooping actually looks really nice with this clematis. So have a look around the garden and see where else you can use these rings. I'm going to make a video about bush clematis later on this summer. So keep watching my channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so that you get notified when that video comes out. This is one of my tree peonies. It's uh, one of my rocky eye seedlings. And if you want to grow peonies from seed, I have a video to show you how to do that. Now about mid-spring I come through the garden, I look at these tree peonies and by then there's some new leaves coming from the plant and they're usually lower down. And I've just made the assumption that dry stuff that's sticking up got winter killed, which is quite common with a lot of the plants in our zone 5 climate. So I've been cutting off these wooden sticks that are going up with no buds. But this year I got around to it a little late and by the time I went to do it I noticed some of these dead stems actually have buds that are starting to develop. Now in the close up of this plant you can see the new growth. When you're cutting these off don't cut them off too early. Wait until about midsummer, and then if a stem is still dead then you can cut it off. But don't cut it off before it flowers because you might be cutting off a lot of new growth.